we have exclusive access to a Ukrainian FPV drone um, workshop in eastern Ukraine. And so I figured you guys might be interested to see what's going on right here in the front lines and take a look at what American troops might be facing in the future. So here we are in the little assembly area, and this is really at company level. There's about 120 guys that this little uh, workshop is serving, and the guys working in here are an integral part of that outfit. Uh, these guys who are working in here who aren't present on at the moment because they don't want their faces on camera, are the experts when it comes to creating the UAVs that the Ukrainian forces are using against the Russians in the trenches. To give you some ideas to the rest of the setup uh, here, we have a couple of drones I've been using. First of all, the smaller seven inch one, which is an FPV. And this is a kamikaze drone. And it has a one and a half kilo payload on it with a uh, range of about between three and five kilometers, depending on repeater setups and the, the terrain. Bear in mind, this is all line of sight. So if you need to get further, then you need to get a repeater somewhere in between you and the target. So this carries about one and a half kilos. Uh, it's one way only. You don't want this thing coming back. And then it'll fly out under control of, let me see, where do we have a controller? Uh, yep. it'll fly out under the control of an operator using a pretty basic controller. Because it's a pretty basic controller, these are capable of being jammed. There's an awful lot of electronic warfare out here, ranging from GPS spoofing and jamming, all the way through to just basic jamming of the video and command uh, channels on these drones. So what we do is, I mean, what I would do is I would use a spectrum analyzer to figure out what's being jammed and then change the drone frequencies to something that's not being jammed. That way they get through with a minimum of interference. Next up in terms of payload capacity is this little fella here, which is an eight and a half inch drone. This has a payload capacity of three kilos, so a big bada boom on this one. And it's also capable of being used not only as a kamikaze role, but also as a bomber. And because of the, uh, because of the increased capacity of it, you can put multiple warheads on this thing fly out, drop them, and then come back. The warheads that have been using, or payloads have been using, is something like this, which is basic plumbing supplies held together with 3D printed connectors. In this case, uh, this is about a pound. And you can see here, just Perspex tail fins, uh, basic PVC plumbing in a tail section. In here is a weight which when this thing hits, the weight travels forward, it'll hit detonator cap, and then it'll initiate the main charge. There's some BBs in there, as you can see, for frag, and there's usually also a 60 degree copper cone in there. And because it's initiated at the tail, and because the copper cone has, cone has a little standoff device here, which is actually made from uh, an ice cream cone, it will punch through about 90 millimeters of armor. So anything that you can hit with this, any armored vehicle you can hit with this will be penetrated uh, by, the, by the jet. In addition, you see the, the BBs on there. So if you've got guys riding on the outside of a BMP, this will kill a BMP and also kill anybody that's on the outside of it. Total cost of these little fellas right here, the seven inch drone is about 450, 500 bucks, including the payload. So if you're taking out say a T90M, which is a couple of million dollars at a pop, uh, you can find that, yeah, it's pretty cost effective. Now, as I said, this is something that we'll be facing as the US troops in the not too distant future. I mean, we already are facing it in the Middle East, and this is the future of warfare.